वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस सेशन फॉर मीडिया सेंटर फ्रॉम बाय द बाय माय नेम इज के श्री राम प्रोपर वर्किंग एज ए असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग इन पीएसए पीएसएन कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी तिरुनेलवेली ओके नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू now i am going to teach you about uh, concrete technology concrete technology concrete technology is a uh, vast syllabus which is used uh, in our concrete world as a civil world we are in the formation of uh, concrete concrete is a overall world scenario which is which we are Uh, used for shelter uh, and uh, it has been used as a slab in our days and uh, or from old and days onwards so concrete in the sense uh, it is in the it is the combination of uh, or it is the mixture of uh, sand aggregate cement water as well as that mixtures so all together with the binding form we 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 get a form set to be concrete and uh, in this concrete technology we are going to see about the whole concrete terms uh, if we see uh, see if we take all these terms in the sense we will get more than 50 to 60 hours so a small introduction about uh, concrete technology and its uh, uh, terms and what are the ingredients over there in concrete technology that thing we are going to discuss now and about uh, there are uh, some ingredients to uh, form a concrete in that uh, we need to know what are the ingredients Uh, in that ingredients what are the ingredients we have we have cement sand aggregate and admixtures as well as water all together all these five we can't uh, able to notify all those things at a minute uh, we notify all these things by means of uh, concur things okay so Uh, in this concrete technology today we are going to uh, discuss in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, short lecture we are going to see about uh, what is meant by cement and uh, in its uh, constituents constituents in the sense chemical constituents over cement and what is meant by hydration over cement and uh, Uh, what is the test on cement as uh, per pas specifications as well as uh, what is the admixtures over uh, cement um, admixtures what is meant by admixtures and uh, what are the admixtures over them so now we are going to see about uh, what is meant by uh, concrete concrete it is a mixture of uh, some ingredients such as uh, cement sand aggregate as well as um, water as well as admixtures okay so here in this ingredient we have to see one by one ingredients as a thing to now in this lecture we are going to see about uh, cement okay cement its constituents what are its constituents over the cement and uh, how the hydration process taking over the cement and how the test on cement as per pa specifications and what is meant by admixtures why it is used for used so far in concrete so these are the things we are going to discuss in today for now we need to know what is meant by cement so cement it is a binder 
used as a substance that sets and hardens and can bind other materials together other materials uh, here we are uh, saying that the other materials as sand aggregate as well as admixture so it is a binder material we need to know the cement is a binder material that sets and hardens the other material so cements used in uh, actually cement it is used in construction that can be characterized by means of hydraulic as well as non hydraulic material okay hydraulic and non hydraulic in the sense while we uh, make a concrete in a underwater construction so in that we need to make a non hydraulic substance of cement as a uh, that thing has to be used in the concrete so it is it has the ability of the cement to used in the presence of water we need to make the ability of the cement to be used in the presence of water so cement uh, it will not set in wet conditions under uh, under water constructions so it can attack by aggressive chemicals after setting hydraulic cement in a mix with activated aluminum silicates porcelano such as uh, fly ash uh, we can uh, make it as a aluminum silicate we we can use porcelano cement these are the cement which is used as a hydraulic cement in mix so example we can say for a cement is said to be portland cement so portland cement is nothing but it is a hydraulic cement okay so here we need to know what is meant by hydraulic cement as well as non hydraulic cement hydraulic cement in the sense here we need to uh, know about the mix of uh, slurries as well as mix of uh, fly ashes over there so non hydraulic cement in the sense it will not set in wet conditions or under water construction that is said to be a non hydraulic cement so next thing uh, we need to know about the uses of cement so cement can be used by means of uh, mortar it, it is used as a mortar and it is used as a concrete okay. so cement mortar it can be used for masonry work plaster pointing etc so cement is used as a mortar by means of masonry structure masonry by means of constructing masonry work plaster and pointing etc so next a uh, cement is used in concrete for laying floors roofs constructing lintels beams weather shed stairs pillars etc okay so uh, cement can be either uh, used in the construction of water wells tennis courts septic tank etc okay so making of uh, making joints for joints pipes making joints for joints pipes etc manufacturing of precast pipes garden seats flower posts etc so preparation of foundation water type floors food paths etc so these are the uses of cement we are uh, taking over there now we need to know what is meant by a ordinary portland cement why it is used and how it has been uh, manufactured over the overall the process has been taken out by means of a, a small diagrammatic figure so here ordinary portland cement it is the most common type of cement in general it is used around the world it is used around the world by means of a 
limestone quarry. The main raw material here by taking the manufacture of cement is limestone and clay. So limestone is a major raw material. Uh, it has been taken by mean, uh, taken from the limestone quarry by means of excavator and the limestone quarry has been excavated over dump truck and it has been crushed over by a crusher after that the secondary crusher it powderized the thing uh, limestone rock it has been roughly taken as a rough ground limestone and it has been finely grounded by means of a fine ground limestone after that it, it is uh, move on to a uh, proportionary equipment such as clay and sand from that uh, the raw materials of uh, clay and sand it has been proportionated with the lime and it has been taken by a grinding mill such that the grinding mill has been taken towards the thing and it preheated with a tower and it is finally taken into a rotary kiln. kiln. Rotary kiln means in this the formation of uh, uh, heavy ball fire will be activated over the kin area. In, in that kin area the amount of uh, preheater tower as well as the preheater uh, ovulated portion of the limestone fine ground limestone with the uh, clay raw materials all together it forms the thing and further it move, move, uh, moved towards to the cooler clinker so hence it uh, cooled and the he uh, and the heated thing has been recycled as a gypsum and the remaining clinker cooled form is pro proportionate uh, proportioning equipment with by means of a grinding mill and finally the raw material uh, the final material that that should be noted as a cement okay that cement has been packed by means of a sack of about what we have seen outside the thing is by means of uh, um, materials so the thing what we have seen in the diagram it has been it is the limestone that is calcium carbonate with small quantities of other materials such as uh, clay clay sand and uh, other raw materials that raw materials should be taken by towards the um, formulated one okay so here it has been uh, heated by means of a 1450 degrees centigrade in a kin in a process known as calcination process that calcination process it it forms in the formation of uh, uh, carbon dioxide and it is liberated from the calcium carbonate to form calcium oxide or quick line so here the blended portion the blended portion with the other materials that can be included in the mixture and hence the resulted water substance is called as a, a clinker so that clinker has been further taken into a formation of a cement so that's all about the cement manufacturing thing so it is the major binder material in concrete so without cement we can't uh, uh, construct a concrete so nowadays it, it might be changed over uh, by means of different uh, adjacent material with the cement as of now till now the cement is the major binder material used as a uh, used in concrete now we are going to see about uh, concrete's uh, its definition after that we will see something about uh, chemical constituents again we are moving on to the uh, cement tiles okay so in this concrete is a composite material consisting of uh, aggregate cement 
and what as a construction as a construction material concrete can be cast in almost any shape desired and once hardened once hardened can become a structural element portland cement may it may be of gray or white it may be of gray or white this type of cement used in construction where there is no exposure of sulfates in the soil or water okay so lime saturation factor in this cement uh, is limited between 0.66 to 1.0 Zero two uh, free lime. Free lime cause the uh, cement to be unsound. Percentage of aluminium trioxide to or ferrous oxide, ferrous trioxide, iron oxide is not less than zero point six six. so the insoluble residue not more than 1.5 percentage the percentage of silicate limited by 2.5 percentage and uh, when the calcium trialuminate 7 percentage and not more than 3 percentage when calcium trialuminate is a tricalcium aluminate greater than 7 percentage so the percentage of silicate here the it is limited to in the cement it is limited to 2.5 percentage when tricalcium silicate tricalcium aluminate less than 7 percentage and not more than 3 percentage when tricalcium aluminate greater than 7 percentage the loss of ignition the loss of ignition is taken as 4 percentage and the percentage of magnesium oxide is taken as 5 percentage uh, fineness not less than 2250 cm square per gram the fineness of the concrete is not less than 2250 cm per gram okay so the chemical constituents of cement over here we are going to discuss now so about uh, the these are their percentage content in order to give good cement so there are different constituents here these are the constituents constituents chemical constituents of cement in this the chemical constituents has been taken by means of percentage content so whereas the oxide elements are calcium oxide silicate aluminum oxide iron oxide magnesium oxide and the alkalis such as potassium oxide as well as sodium oxide as well as silica silicate okay try calcium uh, try uh, sorry silicate okay or silicon trioxide so the amount of calcium oxide the amount of calcium oxide is uh, taken into a percentage content of 60 to 67 percentage uh, silicate has been taken as a or silicon dioxide has been taken as a percentage content of 17 to 25 percentage aluminum oxide aluminum oxide has been taken as a content of 3 to 8 percentage ferrous oxide has been taken a percentage content of 0.5 to 6 percentage magnesium oxide has been taken as a content of 0.1 to 4 percentage alkalis has been taken as 0.4 to 1.3 percentage uh, silicate taken as 1.3 to 3 percentage so now another important term in the cement which we have which we are going to discuss about uh, hydration of cement so hydration of cement is nothing but cement 
it has been which is hydrogen of cement in the sense we need to uh, add water or we need to mix water with cement okay so that is termed as a hydration of cement so uh, with uh, mixing cement with water by means proper proportionation pro pro proportion that is said to be a uh, hydration of cement so the chemical reaction between cement and water in a proportioning mix proportioning mix is called as hydration of cement simply we can say the water cement ratio of the cement okay water cement ratio of the cement that is said to be a hydration of cement it may be in concrete mix or in the making of uh, mortar in a field work so here next thing we are going to know about so this what uh, we need to know about uh, hydration of cement next thing we need to know about uh, setting of cement setting of cement is nothing but uh, whatever we see in say, hydration of cement cement added with water with a proper proportion that is said to be a hydration of cement so setting of cement while we adding water to cement water with cement it it forms into a fluid state so when mixed cement uh, when mixed water with cement uh, it forms into a fluid state it changes to solid state so the time which is uh, considering the fluid state changing of fluid state to the uh, solid state that is said to be a setting time so here the action of changing mixed cement from a fluid state to a solid state is called as a setting of cement and the time required for it to set is called the setting time of the cement here there are uh, three four terms over the setting of cement here the initial setting time of cement is there so where the initial setting time of the cement will be not more than 30 minutes the initial setting time of the cement is not more than 30 minutes and the final setting time of the cement is not more than 10 hours over as per uh, is standard specifications okay here the consistency also taken into an account by means of forming setting time of the cement though the setting time of the cement is same as said as that of uh, setting time of uh, concrete so here the cement setting time as well as the concrete setting time is same why we are taking cement setting time as well as concrete setting time is uh, same in the sense cement may uh, making the major role over the setting time over here in the formation of uh, cement mortar as well as in the formation of uh, concrete okay now we are moving on to the structure of uh, hydrated cement so the structure of hydrated cement in the sense how the bonding technology or how the bonding formation of cement is activated when uh, the cement is added with water after that it changes to a fluid state to solid state the formation of bonding sense over the cement has been there so the thing here by means of the characteristic of uh, bonding uh, structure of hydrated cement is by means of uh, strength dimensional stability as well as durability so here the hydration cement has a characteristics by means of strength dimensional stability as well as durability so hence the it doesn't it influenced not only by the 
proportion but also by the pro properties of hydrated cement paste which in turn depend on the microstructural features okay next uh, the it forms in the fresh cement paste fresh cement paste is a plastic network of particles of cement in water but once the cement paste has set its apparent or gross volume remains approximately constant hardened paste consists of hydrates of the various compounds referred to collectively as gel it is in the formation of collectively as gel and uh, then under the crystal of calcium dioxide calcium hydroxide form okay calcium hydroxide form some minor components so the unhydrated components of cement and the residue of water filled spaces in the um, fresh paste so here what the thing we are uh, i am going to say you about uh, the structure of hydrated cement is if it, it is in the formation of gel okay the crystals of calcium hydroxide has been formed over the hydrated cement and the unhydrated cement is formed as a water filled spaced spaces in the fresh paste it, it is like a residue form but as a formation of residue um, paste, residue of water filled paste so here next thing is it, uh, next thing is by means of uh, low water cement ratio it is in the um, we can say it by means of a pictorial present representation as a cement particles by means of suspended in maximum water cement particles are suspended in maximum water if it is in the formation of high water cement ratio the hydrated cement structure will be like this if it is uh, uh, low water cement ratio the uh, structure will be like this so if it is fully hydrated if the cement has been fully hydrated it, it doesn't have uh, porosity we can't say it doesn't have porosity we we can say it has a less porosity with high strength formation if it uh, and high porosity with the low strength okay uh, if it is hydrated if the cement is hydrated it may be of low porosity by means of high strength it may be of high porosity by means of low strength that what uh, specified in this uh, uh, figure over here so next uh, uh, a vulnerable chapter that is uh, a wonderful form of chapter that is we are going to see about uh, uh, various uh, test on cement so various test on cement we can uh, basically the test on cements we can take it as a two types of uh, test one thing is by means of field test and another thing is by means of a lab test field test in the sense we will uh, test on spot while where the construction is going on or where the work is going on or where concrete is made or where the cement mortar is made or where the masonry structure is going on so in that uh, construction uh, we can say where the construction is going and the, in that we are uh, taken by means of a field test and where the laboratory test has been taken so here there are two tests made over here one thing is about a field test and another thing is about a lab tests so field test the first and major test is uh, known as uh, color the color of the cement should be uniform all over the color has been uniform it is in the formation of major type which is uh, it should be in the typical cement color that is gray color with a light greenish shade gray color 
with the light greenish gray shade that is the uh, color over this cement so generally we can say it is in the formation of grayish color with greenish shade okay so next uh, another next field test is said to be a physical property physical property in the sense by touching or by sensing the cement uh, first thing uh, cement should be feel smooth okay uh, when touching with the finger it feels smooth so may, if if hand is inserted in a bag it should feel cool okay so this is the sensing property or physical properties of uh, field test uh, uh, physical properties of a cement over field test one thing is uh, when we touch it feels like smooth it feel smooth when we insert the hand inside the bag uh, it feel cool so that is the physical properties of uh, cement so next field test is nothing but uh, presence of lumps presence of lumps here the cement should be free from lumps if 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 it if the cement has more lumps we can't use we will not use that cement and it will not get the good strength over the concrete why in the sense the amount of hydrated particles has been already over in that uh, cement while we making uh, uh, why it it is in the formation of lumps so the amount has been moisturized for a moisture content for a moisture content of about 5 percentage to 8 percentage okay so increase of volume may be much as 20 percentage to 40 percentage depending upon the grading of sand so uh, these are the things the presence of lumps over uh, cement it should be free from lumps and the moisture content has been about 5 percentage to 8 percentage only and the increase of my increase of volume of the thing that has been taken as 20 percentage to 40 percentage depending upon the grade of cement okay uh, sorry depending upon the grade of sand so next thing is uh, uh, known, uh, next important thing that we need to know is about uh, uh, strength of the cement over field test so a thick paste of cement with water is made on a piece of thick glass it is kept under water for 24 hours you need to make a paste of cement with water okay and you need to make a uh, formation of that uh, cement paste over a glass plate and it is kept under water and it is kept under water okay uh, after taking after uh, 24 hours it has to be set and there is no crack over that sample or on that sample so this is one of the field test over the cement paste okay next uh, till now we have seen about a field test over the cement now we are going to see about the laboratory test over the cement okay so here the laboratory test over the cement the first one is first and foremost one is about uh, fineness so fineness this test is carried out uh, to check proper grinding of cement how uh, whether the fineness particle of cement is the uh, fineness of particles of cement has been there or not so here it uh, the test has been determined either by permeability of our test test as well as seed test In sieve test, the cement weighing 100 grams has been taken and it is continuously passed through 
for 15 minutes uh, through standard BIS of number 90. 90 micron C we need to take and we need to take uh, uh, for weighing balance with that uh, we need to take 100 grams of cement we need to sieve the cement uh, through 90 micron sieve highest 90 micron sieve in that uh, you need to see if the thing the residue particle has been uh, searched over the sieve itself so here the weight should not be more than uh, residue weight should not be more than 10 percentage of original weight so if it, it should not be the original sorry 10 percentage more than 10 percentage the thing has been taken as a finest particle in permeability apparatus test the specific area the specific area of the cement particle has been calculated in this test it is better than sieve test okay so here the permeability apparatus is better than the sieve test the specific surface acts as a measurement of frequency of the um, particles of average size so next thing of the laboratory test which we are going to see is about uh, consistency so here the, it is to determine the percentage of water required to preparing the uh, cement paste okay so percentage of water we need to uh, find out to preparing the cement paste generally we can say the water cement ratio we need to know the water cement ratio of the uh, cement okay so here what we have to do what is the apparatus over here is wicket apparatus okay so take 300 grams of cement and add 30 percentage by weight of uh, weight of its to water that is uh, uh, 10 percentage 20 percentage and 30 percentage after the 32 percentage make a mix of uh, mix the mix the cement with water and uh, thoroughly it has to be mixed with the water so fill the mold of wicket apparatus and the gauging time should be 3.75 to 4.25 3.75 to 4.25 so in that uh, 4.25 minutes wicket apparatus consists of a needle it is attached a movable rod with an indicator attached to it there are three attachments one is about a plunger another one is about a square needle and a needle with annular collar so there are three attachments over the wicket apparatus one thing is about square needle another uh, one is about plunger and uh, needle with annular collar so the plunger is attached to the movable rod so movable rod here by means of uh, forming the consistency by means of knowing the consistency we need to attach the movable rod and the plunger is gently lowered on the gently lowered on the paste in the mold the settlement of plunger is noted if the penetration is between 5 millimeter and 5 millimeter to 7 millimeter from the bottom of mold the water added is correct so if not process it is then repeated with a different percentage of water till the desired penetration is obtained so the purpose of this test is to determine the percentage of water preparing with the cement paste of other tests so next laboratory test before uh, going to soundness i need to uh, add some other thing to this consistency so which is uh, there are three forms of uh, consistency 
thing one thing is about puncture it is used for consistency and another thing is about uh, square needle it is used for initial setting time here the same preparation of 300 grams of water is has been uh, 300 grams of cement added with that consistency percentage of water has been taken by means of 0.75 percentage uh, by decreasing the term after that when the formation has been taken by means of 5 to 7 mm 5 mm to 7 mm the formation has been plunged over there so that is the initial setting time here the initial setting time of the cement does not uh, moves over 30 minutes okay so the initial setting time of the cement is not more than 30 percentage so next thing is about the anlar plancher after taking that uh, square needle you need to insert the anlar needle in that anlar needle you have to make a form formation over there in that what you have to do is you need to impress uh, make a impression over the uh, plancher over the mold if the plancher if the anlar needle has been pressed over the top portion of the plunger then that is the final setting time it touches the thing it will not impress the mold it touches the uh, top portion of the mold so that is said to be a uh, anlar mold of the plunger so here the anlar mold of the plunger should be uh, taken as a final setting time the final setting time should not be more than or it should not be more than 10 hours okay so these are the things i am uh, adding to the consistency wicket needle apparatus setup so next thing we are moving on to the soundness soundness test it is uh, uh, to detect the presence of uncombined line in the it is used to determine the presence of uncombined line in the cement so here cement it has it has been it is the mixture of lime and clay so the uncombined lime presence has been taken in the cement so the cement paste is prepared over here so the mold the mold is placed and it is filled by cement paste here the mold has been taken by means of a needle model or mold mold in this the mold is uh, taken by means of a uh, covered formation at top and bottom as a glass plate okay so the mold is placed and it is uh, filled by cement paste it is covered at uh, top by another glass plate a small weight a small weight placed at uh, top and the whole assembly is submerged in water for 24 hours so the distance between the points of indicator is noted and the mold is again placed in water and heat is applied in such a way that that uh, such a way that boiling point of uh, water is reached in about 30 minutes the boiling of water is continued for one hour so the mold is removed from water and it is allowed to cool down and it is allowed to cool down the distance between the point of indicator is again measured the difference between the two readings indication expansion of cement it should not be exceed 100 uh, sorry it should not be exceed 10 mm so next thing of uh, laboratory test is about uh, compressive strength here for cement we need to determine the compressive strength compressive strength in the sense we need to make a cement mortar paste okay cement mortar paste in the sense we need to take uh, some ratio say that uh, 1 is to 3 ratio 
1 is to 3 ratio in the sense 1 part by cement and 3 part by sand. So, you need to prepare a cement mortar by means of 1 part by cement and 3 part by sand and mix all together in the formation of correct proportion. After that, add water over that mortar, uh, mortar uh, mix with a proper water cement ratio of 0 0.4 that is 0 0.4 is the water cement ratio that is said to be a 40 percentage of water you need to add with that cement and sand ok so the mortar is placed in molds so the mold of its uh, thing is nothing but 70.6 mm or 76 mm as per IS, IS norms Indian standards norms. So here then the mortar after placing the mortar in molds it has been vibrated and for 2 minutes and damp cabin has been taken after that it has been uh, taken by means of a cooled by means of a 20, 24 hours it has to be set to over 24 hours after that the specimen are removed from the mold and they are submerged in water for curing then the cube has been tested by means of compressive testing machine at the end of 3 days after 3 days after 7 days after 14 days and finally after 28 days the 28 day strength has been is the correct strength of the cement ok so such that the compressive strength has been taken by means of laboratory measurements <coughs> next uh, test is nothing but uh, tensile strength of the um, laboratory test in in this the test has been the test was formerly used to have an indirect indication of compressive strength here the mortar sand and cement is prepared mortar of sand and cement is prepared and the water is added to the mortar the mortar is uh, placed in briquette molds briquette molds in the sense it is in the formation of a brick like uh, brick like formation mold that is briquette mold the mold is filled with the mortar then a small heap of mortar is formed at its top it is beaten down by a standard spatula till water appears on the surface so same procedure is repeated and the other phase briquette has been taken so it has been taken by means of a briquettes or kept in tap so the briquettes are tested in the <coughs> tensile testing machine at the end of 3 days 7 days 14 days as well as 28 days so next thing is about the grade of cement so grade of cement represents the specific 28 days of the compressive strength so generally in the formation of ordinary portland cement there are three grades of cement such that the compressive strength should be by means of 33 grade 43 grade and 53 grade which mentions the 33 <coughs> megapascal as well as 43 megapascal as well as 53 megapascal next thing is about uh, admixtures it is one of the uh, additive used in the concrete additives used in the concrete admixtures are those ingredients in concrete which is other than used by a thing that is said to be a admixture it is a additive material so uh, admixtures are those ingredients in concrete other than portland cement water and aggregates that are added to the mixture immediately before or during mixing okay immediately before the mixing or during mixing of concrete okay so here the admixtures it is in the formation of liquid form or solid form 
are powdered form. So this admixtures has been introduced by being by taking by measurement of uh, giving strength or uh, by measurement of giving uh, um, more uh, strength as well as more uh, durability as well as uh, more uh, admirable things okay so these are the things over the admixtures so next thing is about the classification of admixtures here these are the classification of admixtures uh, over uh, techniques of these things first one is about air and training admixture second one is about water reducing admixtures and the sec third one is about plasticizers fourth one is about accelerating admixtures fifth one is about retarding admixtures sixth one is about hydration control admixtures seventh one is about corrosion inhibitors eighth one is about shrinkage reducers ninth one is about alkali alkali silica reactivity inhibitors tenth one is about coloring admixtures and the eleventh one is about miscellaneous admixtures and uh, here the last thing is about uh, uses of uh, admixtures uh, why we are using the admixtures over there to reduce the cost of concrete construction it is the more thing uh, main thing to reduce the cost of concrete construction we are using admixtures to achieve certain properties of con concrete more effectively than other means so to achieve the certain properties in the sense to achieve the strength to achieve the tensile property to achieve the more and more things for the concrete so to achieve uh, workability of the concrete we are adding admixtures to achieve um, more uh, durability we are uh, thing uh, we are making admixtures we are adding admixtures to maintain the quality of uh, concrete during the stages of uh, mixing transporting and placing and curing so quality of concrete in quality uh, to maintain the quality concrete we are adding admixtures so uh, the during the stages of mixing uh, transporting placing and curing in adverse weather conditions we are uh, placing the concrete so to overcome certain emergencies during concrete operations also we are using the admixtures so with this i conclude myself uh, in this lecture hope you have a interested things uh, you may got understood over these things so thank you thank you one and all person